So in this module, we're going to look at how we index a pattern, in particular a cubic pattern, and then in the next module, we'll go through an example of those steps. So to start out, before we can index a cubic pattern, uh, we need to be able to measure a couple things. Um, and so in the previous uh, lecture, we talked about these R values. And so these R values are the distances from the central spot to the diffraction spot, and then amplified or magnified uh, with the camera length. And so we can measure those lengths directly from the diffraction pattern, and then using information about the camera length, uh, obtain the interplanar spacing for the HKL set of planes corresponding to that spot. So here's just kind of an example of a couple different R values, and then that will correspond to the interplanar spacing. So if we take that interplanar spacing and combine it with the expression that we had in XRD relating the lattice parameter to the interplanar spacing for cubic systems, if we put those two equations together, we'll get this. And so that, let me just refresh your memory, uh, incorporated this equation, which related basically Bragg's law for TEM. So we basically put in the R and L there. So that's Bragg's law combined with the lattice parameter expression for cubic. And that's where this expression comes from. So once we measure the R value, then um, we can discern HKL values uh, based on that. Additionally, the other piece of information that is useful in these patterns, um, so we have the, uh, the length of the vector, but we also have um, an angle between various uh, points or spot patterns. Or, sorry, we have an angle between various diffraction spots in the reciprocal space. And we call that angle between two diffraction spots uh, with respect to the central spot as alpha. And so this is going to be um, something that depends on the system we have, and therefore the angle here can help us um, in indexing a pattern. And so in general, this angle we can define for cubic system uh, at, with respect to the HKL values for those two peaks uh, with this expression. So this is something that just in general gives you the angle um, with respect to two planes. And so this is just an expression you'll have for two vectors. So we can also obtain angle based on those. And so basically with a pattern like this, we can measure all these uh, R values and all these angles, and this is gonna be what helps us index um, a cubic pattern. So um, often is the case we don't have to necessarily um, um, calculate each set of angles between uh, planes and cubic. It's usually tabulated. And so I've put a table here in the, in the slides, uh, table 2.4 in a different uh, text, which basically, if you just look up various uh, planes, you can see the angle between them. And so that's just in case you don't want to do that extra step. If it's in the table, you can uh, feel free to use that. So with this in mind, um, Often the way that we index an unknown crystal is by looking at the ratio of these R values. So if we calculate an R value for this point and this point, and so those would be R1 and R2, then the ratio is um, uh, related to their D spacings, obviously, and therefore, um, with, uh, it gives us a ratio of the HKL values, as you can see here, if you plug in the expression. And so effectively, we can look up 
um, known ratio of R values that would occur for different types of structures. And we can compare that to the ratio of R values that we have and uh, uh, determine what uh, type of crystal structure from known uh, crystal structures that we have. And so uh, looking at these ratios is often how we do that.